Hey everybody, my name is Paul, I'm the Lost Scott, and welcome to my first look at Mile High Taxi, an arcade high score driving game by Cassius John Adams. Before we start, I just want to remind you that I almost exclusively cover indie games both here on YouTube and over on Twitch. So if you haven't already followed me there, I'll put a link to my channel in the description. But while we're here, please think about hitting that subscribe button like your Uber driver hitting that peak time fare multiplier. Let's get to the game. Let's go, let's go. First things first, you're already I'm thinking that this is just Crazy Taxi style. with flying cars. And you're right. Kind of. The developers have nailed the overall aesthetic of Crazy Taxi and transferred the bright colours and total 90s vibe of that game over here. In fact, if you told me they'd literally stolen vehicle model from the original, I wouldn't be at all surprised. But they didn't. As far as I know. The gameplay is more or less the same concept too. You're driving around in an open world looking for people to pick up and take from one place to another. The fares are divided into three colours, green, blue and red. Green is shorter fares that earn less money but take less time. Blue takes a bit longer but has higher rewards. Red is for longer fares that pay out higher fees but eat up more of your time up. That's actually a great concept and I wonder if any other games like this have done it. So they've cribbed some ideas from similar games, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But what you want to know is what they've done that's actually new and original. The main new feature is the most obvious, that third dimension. Adding verticality is a really great idea. We all love flying cars. Humans have wanted flying cars since the 50s and we should have them by now. Where's my flying car, damn it? In Mile High Taxi, there are 10 different height okay. levels that you'll need to switch between. Fares can be found on any of them, and they can ask to be taken to any of them. It's actually way more challenging to adapt to that vertical mindset than I expected. The game actually stops being a driving game and moves into a 6 degrees of freedom simulator. Getting from point A to point B is easy enough, but if you get to point B and you're 5 levels too high, then that's going to be a problem. And problems here cost you time. Unfortunately, this is where some of the weaknesses of Mile High Taxi start to appear. The interface hasn't really been modified to work in the air as well as it does on the ground. The direction arrow is great when everything's on the same level, but isn't accurate enough at telling you when you need to start heading up or down. And by the time you realise you're on the wrong level, it's often too late and you spend several valuable seconds moving slowly up or down to reach the right place. And often on those verticals, you'll run into a ledge or bridge or something, which slows you down even more. The passengers tell you when they enter the car what level they're going to, but it's really easy to miss if you don't hear the audio. Likewise, there's an altimeter to tell you what level you're on, but it doesn't feel like it responds quick enough. And sometimes the drop-off or pick-up point will be between levels, so neither is right. If you ask me, I'd like to see the two interface pieces combined. Maybe the arrow could be changed to show both direction and whether you're too low or too high. Right now the arrow doesn't move enough when you're far away to be useful once you're close. Speaking of where you need to be, Mile High Taxi is set in Toronto, my new hometown. But so many movies and TV shows are filmed here, but it never appears as itself. So it's nice to see all the familiar street names and streetcars here. Although, since the streetcars go up the sides of buildings, Maybe I should call them wall cars instead? And since we're already off on this tangent in the world of flying cars, would public transportation still need to exist? If I can fly over or around traffic, Do you know doesn't that going negate the point of mass transit? I worry that I might be overthinking this a little bit. What about how it feels to drive around this modern, vibrant, multicultural city? I promise this video is not sponsored by the city of Toronto. Yeah, it's a mixed bag. Got it. On a single level, driving flat, it feels good. The controls are responsive and there's a pretty decent sense of speed. The glowing markers for picking up fares are easy to spot from far away. More on those in a minute. My first complaint is that the NPC cars don't really exist. They pass straight through you and don't even make an effort to move out of the way. They're on rails and might as well be background drawings rather than 3D rendered models. And to add insult to injury, these cars often change models as they get closer to you. Hmm. There are coins scattered around, but most of the time, the amount of time you'll spend trying to pick them up isn't really worth the cost. At first, I thought there were going to be a time bonus, which might have made a difference, but that's not the case. It's just money to add to your high scores. Related to that, 
There are certain locations on the map where the game takes controls away from you and you collect a bunch of coins while performing some kind of sick move. It's actually a really cool idea, but there's no way to know where and when it's going to happen. In fact, one time it kicked in right as I was about to drop off a passenger and it took me an extra few seconds to get back to where I wanted to be. During the session, you get told that there are upgrades waiting for you at the nearest taxi depot, but they're not marked on the map okay. and they don't have any in-game indicators, so good luck trying to find those in the middle of a game. Unfortunately, the nature of a game like this means it's going to be a bit of a one-trick pony. Or two, if you get the free DLC. If you don't like repeating the standalone score attack gameplay style over and over, you're going to have a bad time. Mile High Taxi starts as if it's going to have some kind of story with the player introduced as someone new to the business. So kind of like day, Iron huh? Land's way better well, futuristic dystopian flying car game cloud pump. Right off. I was thinking maybe I'd be ranking up and get car upgrades or increased time limits or score multipliers, but nothing like that exists here. There's a free roam mode, but you can't pick up any passengers and it's really just for learning your way around the city. I don't know how accurate the Toronto map is, I've only lived here a couple of years, but it would have been pretty cool to pick up passengers without the pressure of that time limit. Sequential mode is a fixed list of people to pick up in a fixed order, and to be honest, I don't see the point of this mode at all. But the real problem is that verticality again. Moving up or down feels like it happens at half the speed of everything else. It's hard to describe by itself, so I'll use something else as an example. You know, in Unreal's flight games, like fun. Star Fox, for example, oh, where even if you move to the top or bottom okay. of the screen, you're still being pushed forward? That's how it feels when you try to move vertically in Mile High Taxi. It happens, oh, it's again, just incredibly eh? slow. Okay, but I, don't want the I think it's because the car can never really point straight up or down. It never goes beyond 30 or maybe 45 degrees. But that means it also takes a long time to make your way between levels. Time that you're always aware is taken away. The loading screen has controls listed to jump directly between floors, but they only work at high speed. It's disappointing that the one really unique feature of this game is also the weakest part of it. One thing I will say helped me was turning off camera movement and the options. It still didn't feel great, but it actually made it feel like the game was working with me rather than against me. Another problem is that in order to pick up fares, you need to come to a complete stop inside the coloured circles. I might be misremembering, but I thought Crazy Taxi automatically stopped you as soon as you entered the circles, which would be a giant quality of life improvement here. That's especially true when you realise that you need to use a button to stop, because if you use the left trigger, you'll start to reverse instead. I believe the reason there's no brake stop reverse transition is probably due to the time limits and it's quicker to immediately reverse in case you get stuck, but it's actually an awkward thing to remember. The fares themselves have decent enough voice acting, but there are so few characters and each one has so few lines, you'll hear them all multiple times during a single game. And what kind of slang is super green anyway? Super green. Super green. Super green. Super green. Super green. What does it mean? Do they all just really love kale? Super green. Mile High Taxi has other problems as well. The first one I noticed is that if you change any of the options, Over here. like turning off motion blur or chromatic Level aberration, for example, they'll be set back to default the next time you load the game. It's like starting from scratch every time. Likewise, at the end of the game, you get a score and achievements for earning certain amounts or surviving certain You're amounts of time. But it doesn't track those scores anywhere. Unless you write it down somewhere outside of the game, and let's be honest, you're not going to do that, you'll have no target to aim for next time. Maintaining an online score table might be too much to expect from a small developer, but a local one would have been nice. Otherwise, what's the point of scores at all? A few times I've encountered a weird and annoying bug where the arrow and GPS maps show completely different directions. I've learned that if this happens, it's the arrow I should be following, but that's not really the point. Also, Mile High Taxi uses the default Unity icon at the taskbar. I don't know why this annoys me so much, but it just feels off. Not exactly low effort, but I don't know. Other weird stuff. There are three characters and cars to choose from at the start. You can choose a skin colour for each person, but each character is tied to a specific car, so you can't have the man driving the one that looks like a muscle car, for example. You can't have the non-binary character driving the retro 1950s hot rod. 
but maybe even weirder than that. Things like the way the camera follows the car are also tied to specific characters. So if you want the camera to be tightly locked to the car, but you don't like the vehicle that option comes with, too bad. It's nice to have the option, obviously, but this should definitely be part of the control options rather than part of character selection. And since we're talking about options, it won't surprise you to learn that there are no accessibility tweaks here at all. You can turn subtitles on and off, but none of the dialogue is so important that it would break the game if you missed it. Controls are fixed, so if you can't use a traditional controller, then you're going to have a bad time. And as I said, tweaks for how the car's handle is unique to each vehicle. So while that might help if things get hard, it might mean sacrificing the car you actually like the look of. Mile High Taxi had potential, but unfortunately it can't fill the shoes that Crazy Taxi left. Maybe with a, a bigger team or some more experience, they could have done something let's more go, with it. Go. Because there are glimpses of cool ideas, but they never really live up to expectations. On the other hand, if this video lived up to your expectations, then please think about subscribing to the channel. And if you got this far, then you must have liked something about it, right? So please hit like and leave a comment suggesting other games I should cover, or an emoji or something. Engagement really does help boost the visibility of this video. Once again, I stream indie games on Twitch and I have new first look videos as often as I can. I'm The Lost Scott, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. You're fired, rookie.